Creating a back channel for in-class discussions is a great use of today's meet. A back channel for in-class discussions looks just like this. Um, this is actually two sides of the transcript that I've put side by side. Um, it is one long, continuous um, back channel, and it has all of these tweets on it, or these very short micro posts, um, 140 characters or less, um, by students about whatever question that we are developing in class. So this is an example from my AP students um, talking about Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried, just like in the intro. Um, this is a slightly different uh, set of those discussions. This discussion goes on for pages and pages and pages. Um, so I've added some, I've added these in here because I wanted to look at the different ways in which using a back channel for in-class discussion gets kids engaged. Um, first off, there's an app so that I have students on cell phones. I have um, computers in the back of the classroom so people that didn't bring their cell phones or don't have um, access or can't get service in my room, um, they're on the computers. Uh, my computer is up and then I also have my cell phone with today's meet on it. So all of these different avenues for getting to the back channel. Um, <clears throat> so we start talking in class and I start with a list of questions that I've developed based on whatever the reading assignment was. Um, for this one we're talking about Tim O'Brien and how he feels abandoned by um, his war buddies when he gets injured and he can no longer fight. And so they come back, um, someone else has kind of taken his place and he starts acting very, very childish. And um, so this is, this is them talking about that last part of the book. Um, you can see that students uh, are differentiated. Their, their answers are sometimes longer and in-depth. Um, sometimes they're short and quick. And so students differentiate what they're going to post. Um, one great thing about back channels is I can see what they're thinking as we're talking about it. So I pose a question. And immediately I get all of these responses. So I can look through the responses. I can tell immediately if somebody is off, um, doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, I can go back later and see if there's anybody that didn't post. So maybe they, or that they're only posting what other people have said before. So maybe they didn't do the reading. So I need to have a conversation with them. Um, another thing that I can do is as I'm looking at their answers, instead of calling on someone right away, I can wait um, watch and see what they post, and then pull the interesting answers up. So I know what kids are going to talk about before I call on them to talk in class. And so that's a really good way for me to know which answers I'm going to pull. Um, it's also an incentive to students to say something great, because if their answer is something boring, I'm not going to call on them. They're not going to get to talk out in class. And so there's a real competitive nature to get the best answer so that I call on that person to explain and give examples and get to talk. Um, so that's a nice little incentive. Um, it involves lots of conversation, these back channels. So imagine a room like a cocktail party where everybody is having all of these different conversations. And then imagine they're all grouped around the same topic. Um, so you can hear little bits and pieces of all these different conversations. And you'll see students will go back and forth with each other on today's meet. Um, they'll start going back and forth quietly in class. Um, they will make sure that they know who's who. So this right here where Joel puts his name, um, he had signed in as Triple J. And somebody earlier asked, who's Triple J? And so he said Joel. And so kids are very, like they hold each other accountable. It's like, who is this? Who's talking here? Um, and they, they do a good job of, of engaging each other in what's going on. Now, this took a little bit of training. Um, there was a lot of what's up at the beginning. Um, and I was like, okay, this is supposed to be formal. Or not formal, but it, not formal in writing style. But it's, it's supposed to be an actual discussion. And I'm going to print this off and other people are going to be able to see it. So I make sure that they know that it's serious. And it's not just goofing around and playing around. Um, there's also some etiquette issues that you need to work through. So no shouting, no um, bullying, none of that stuff. But for the most part, once students get this down, they love doing back channels. Um, 
you get all of these different things. You also have kids that say things that might not necessarily be on the question, but it's something that they're thinking and they, they just need to share it. Um, and that works really great in a back channel because then it doesn't interrupt the flow of the big discussion. It just lets them say what they need to say. Other people can comment on that if they need to, and it moves it right along. So that's using back channels for in-class discussions.